Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Reflection on the Rock on this Friday, May 24th. And as we, I think we're approaching uh, Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. and this is be just a great time to start your weekend off with a, an evening reflection to kind of center your, your thoughts as we go forth. We're gonna to talk tonight, uh, we're gonna reflect on Psalm 29 and talk about the glory of God. I think this is the thunder psalm, as you yeah. called it, on Wednesday. And um, so it's it's uh, appropriate then that we begin our reflection this evening with, Mine eyes have seen the glory. That's a childhood memory song right mm -hmm. there, my mm -hmm. goodness. Let us pray. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. He is coming like the glory of the morning on the wave. His truth is marching on. Mm -hmm. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So here we go with Psalm 29. Mm -hmm. You divine beings, give to the Lord, give to the Lord glory and power. Mm -hmm. Give to the Lord the glory due to God's name. Bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. Mm -hmm. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. Mm -hmm. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull, makes Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. Mm -hmm. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest spare. But in God's temple, everyone shouts, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the floodwaters. The Lord sits enthroned, king forever. Let the Lord give strength to all people. Let the Lord bless all people with peace. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a thundery song. It, the voice of God is, boy, powerful. Oh, yeah, it, it, you can really, literally, like get, uh, yes, you can get blown away by it. Mm -hmm. So this psalm and the reflection Margaret did on Wednesday is paired with Sunday scripture readings, which is, um, uh, it's always the Sunday after Pentecost, which is Trinity Sunday. You know, now we've had the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us and we have the um, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the Creator God. So we combine all these three, three things and then celebrate this unity of God in three persons. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. And our friend John McNeil would get very upset with us if we assigned any of those descriptions to one of the persons. Yeah. Um, we'd be something called a modalist, which I've never figured out what that means. But whatever it was, it was wrong. Well, well <laughs> right. But what it means is all three of those are uh, always are, interact. Yeah, they're interacting. It cannot be assigned to just limited to just one Father. person of yeah. uh, the Trinity. Yeah. But they're easy um, descriptors mm -hmm. to kind of kind of plant in our head to kind of get an, uh, an idea of, of who God is. And the, I think the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity is probably one of the hardest to try and wrap your heads around. Um, this formula for um, 
envisioning the various aspects of God. And so for those of us who are more um, image uh, driven mm -hmm. than say uh, a modalist, uh, you know, whatever modalism, which we don't even know what that is. Um, this, the reason this psalm is, I think, paired with Trinity Sunday is all these images of God that are created in our head when you read through mm -hmm. this psalm and the voice thunders and it's strong and majestic and breaks cedar trees and makes Lebanon jump like a young bull. God's voice unleashes fiery flames, which kind of brings you back to lightning, oh, or right. the gospel to Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Shakes the wilderness. Mm -hmm. God's voice can convulse the oaks and strip forest bare. Mm. And it says, you know, sits in a throne above the floodwaters forever. This, this high above us kind of thing. While we're, you know, in the chaotic swirling of flooded waters, mm -hmm. God sits enthroned above it. But then this, oh, thank goodness, we close with this sweet um, verse 11. It says, blessing. Let God give strength to all people. Let God bless all people with peace. Mm -hmm. But if we really look at Psalm 29 and kind of the, they're violent images, you know, of this, um, it, there's no still small voice in Psalm 29. <laughs> no, it's no. all a thundery kind of majestic um, images. And this Psalm repeatedly kind of expects us and asks us to give glory, um, give God the glory, the beauty and the splendor, the worshipful praise, the honor and thanksgiving, which is where um, the hymn we opened with, mine eyes have seen the beauty and the splendor of the mm -hmm. coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there is a paradox to Psalm 29 because the, the images are rather violent. Um, they're stormy. And we think of tornadoes and wildfires and hurricanes and mm -hmm. earthquakes. And, and Psalm 29 says God is in the storm. Mm -hmm. And yet we are taught that God shelters us from mm -hmm. the storm. So we have this kind of tension, this paradox mm -hmm. of, um, of the images of, of God. So is God in the tornado or is God, you know, sheltering me from the tornado? But it's verse 11, the blessing that kind of reconciles us um, with the God of the storm and the God of, um, of shelter. So the God who is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who is creator, redeemer, sustainer, has the power or the glory to reconcile the paradox, to help us live with it in the tension. Mm. And uh, this commentator that I mentioned on Wednesday, um, Mark Miller McLermore, um, he says that this psalm is to be read aloud mm. and treasured as it pronounces God's power it also raises hard questions as it assures us of God's grace, strength, and peace. It's, yeah. And and I think that's that's how we experience God. We can experience God in the the exactly the yeah. majesty and the um the just the powerful way that God is present in our world mm -hmm. while at the same time um, sheltering us mm -hmm. from the storms. Mm -hmm. So the puzzle and the mystery um, that is the Trinity, that is God, ultimately calls us um, identity and, and you know names aside, but calls us to glory, honor, and praise. Mm -hmm. And if I were to pick out three now, that's what I, the three I would pick to describe mm -hmm. who God is in my life, is mm -hmm. to give God glory, honor, and praise. Mm -hmm. So that's um, that's Trinity a Sunday in in a nutshell until we get to <laughs> Sunday anyway. But yeah. but this idea of just the majesty is mm -hmm. is it's even in control of the the, the creation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's hard always to we're not a a culture that likes paradox, but the reality of life is yeah. that those that. Things have to be whole, and and two things 
Very different can be true at the same time. It doesn't have no. to be either or. Right. It's both and. Right. Yeah. So it's, it was an interesting um, commentary, an insight that Mark Miller had. But it was really, because that's what I finally ended up doing was I read it out loud to, and then uh -huh. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. it is more powerful yeah. to hear it. I once preached on it and a thunderstorm came through right at the moment of preaching it and the, and the wind came through the church windows oh. and the, the shades started flapping. It was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty... And then we really felt it. Yeah. And I think for me, there's a power in understanding... It, same with the, the Wednesday story about Isaiah. Understanding one's smallness mm -hmm. and God's bigness. Yeah. Is always a good lesson, I think. Well, and we're, if we're if what we're called to do, as with Isaiah, is to listen, mm -hmm. then um, uh, yeah, sometimes that is not a still small voice. Right, my Lord calls me, calls me by the thunder. <laughs> that too, that too. Right. Well, our prayer uh, tonight um, is based on healer of our every ill. Oh yes, and has a number of. Um, uh, exact readings from the actual hymn. And I'm going to pause in each place and add, have you add, and you have the prayer oh, yes, list, so you. you can just okay. add in at each particular yep. place as needed. Yep. Healer of our every ill. Let us pray. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's pretty words that end. Yes. Very, very much. Um, Sunday's focus. We're going to look at um, a, a scripture from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. And then we're going to pair that with John chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. So if you know John 3, 16, it's right there. <laughs> wrap that up. So we're going to look at that in light of um, this Trinity Sunday. Mm. And then a reminder that we are serving a covenant table meal on Memorial Day. And um, the the normal covenant table teams are, are taking the day off. So the church has stepped in to provide a, a dinner. And um, so if you'd like to stop by and help, maybe around 2.30 um, until about 6 o'clock, we can um, serve the neighborhood a, 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 a blessing plate. It's our, ver our version of a... Garbage, garbage play. I love it. That's great. Yeah. To God be the glory. Oh, is it me? It's you. <laughs> it's a blessing time. It's all this blessing. You know, we got a blessing in the psalm and a blessing yeah. plate. And a well, and, and the table. other day when we sang to God be the glory in worship, it, it's, it, it just always warms my heart because it's, it's just, a, the words sometimes I struggle, the lyrics I struggle with, but the must just be that it's a familiar haunt, like holy, holy, holy. Yeah. It's just one of those hymns that really kind of puts God to the, you know, in the glory. So, to God be the glory. Cool. Yeah. Well, have a great weekend and a good evening. Good night. <laughs>